Hey guys and welcome to a brand new video. In this video I'm going to be talking about my i3 config as well as some apps that I use on a daily basis. So let's get started. Now the very first thing is the operating system that I'm using. I'm using Endeavor OS as you can see by the pfetch command and this is based on Arch Linux. Now let's talk about the i3 config. So for the tiling window manager I use i3. You obviously can choose any other window manager like Awesome, DWM, Xmonad, or something like that. Now let me open up the config for i3. So as you can see, this is i3, and out of the box, it doesn't look too good, but it's still usable. But the thing is that uh, we have some things like i3 status bar, which I don't really think is a great one. But you can still configure it to look really modern and we have a title on top of the application window which is not good at all so i removed a lot of them and we obviously need to have some startup applications in order to draw you know wallpaper to the desktop in order to have some fancy uh, effects and also have a bar like polybar as you can see right here and a gnome polkit or polkit like gnome polkit lx D, dm polkit you know all of this so if you go into the configuration this is what you find i have the dot files in the description down below check them out if you want to know all of that so we have nitrogen pycom po uh, polybar as well as the polkit so pretty basic stuff we don't have too much and also we have uh, volume control brightness control for example i could mute it so as you can see this is what we have and i can unmute it now it's going to update it on the polybar and that's something it's pretty good so i'm going to talk about polybar and all of that in a minute but as you can see we can control all of them on a laptop if you're using a laptop then obviously these controls would work and we have lock screen as i3 lock and i'm just setting a color to this random hex color and if you want to switch between layouts for example you can full screen a window or you can do window shift f in order to do a floating mode layout you can do windows t i guess i'm not really sure about that uh, but there are some other layouts as well so if i go down a little bit we have mod s mod w mod e window mod shift f for the floating layout you can use all of that i generally use the floating full screen as well as the tiling layout mainly tiling layout and i have some bunch of key bindings that i use so let me open it again so for example if i have two windows open if i want to resize something i use windows control j no, l h and if i have applications open up and bottom then i use windows control j and k these are like the vim key bindings and if i do windows control l as you can see it resizes to the right and windows control h same with the j and k keys as well so if i go bottom go to the bottom as you can see those are the most important things and we have our gaps as well so if you want to add some space between the polybar as well as the sides then just add these bunch of code and that's going to add gaps in and out now the 128th line as you can see right here is going to disable the title bar now you obviously need to set the font to zero and i think this is not the line of code you need to make sure that your font is set to zero otherwise the title bar is going to appear on top of this application window now the terminal that i use is alacrity now the reason alacrity is good is because it's gpu accelerated and it doesn't take too much of memory it's a minimal one and if i open up the configuration for that as you can see this is the configuration so you can see that we have you know fonts we have colors and one other application that i use is alacrity themes which i think is really good so like credit themes is going to allow you to switch between themes without having to edit the configuration 
file every single time so that is about the terminal now for the shell i use fish so as you can see if i do if i do shell as you can see it uh, prints out pin fish so that is what i use and obviously fish works really well and there are some stuff that are good like uh, auto completion by default without having to install plugins now it's, it is going to be located under dot config fish and config dot fish the problem with fish though is that if you write a lot of bash scripts they may not work well now for the editor i made a couple of videos about this i use neovim like if i open up my website simply as you can see we have a neovim working as expected uh, we have our file manager our terminal you know all of them work now i made a couple of videos about neovim and the configuration i have done if you're interested in that check it out it should be in the description down below now for the application launcher i use rofi because i think rofi is a really good application launcher but if i open up the terminal and see we have some modes that you can enable for example we can enable the windows cd which is in order to navigate between windows so if you are used to the alt tab key in order to switch between windows instead of the windows j key or windows shift j key whatever that is you can simply use this in your configuration and hit alt tab in order to move between this is much better to use and i don't really think d menu has this the other problem with d menu is that it searches for programs inside of slash user slash bin so for example if i do ls slash user slash bin and pipe it to wc dash l it's going to show us the word count we can see that it shows us about 3130 so rofi is not going to search every single application located in slash user slash bin and instead searches for desktop file or a file that ends with dot desktop for example if i open up tunar which ends with a dot desktop file i think it searches for applications in slash user slash shared and applications and as you can see we have a lot of files with the desktop and if i do an ls wc dash l as you can see there are about 67 files in the slash user slash share applications which is much more less than the 330 pack, uh, applications inside of slash user slash pin now you need to patch the menu for that and it you can obviously get a good experience if you patch d menu but you don't have to patch rofi now let's talk about polybar so if i open up the polybar config this is what we have so if i go down a little bit as you can see we have some modules now the reason why i think polybar is better i'm not saying it is the best but at least for the most part it is better because it has a built-in trayer now i3 works well with polybar and vice versa so as you can see we have modules right, left and right so for the on the left side we have our workspaces and we have our title bar to the right we have our cpu we have our memory usage the battery we have calendar and volume icon and the OBS as well as the flame shot apps that you see right here are the trayer. So they are a part of trayer. These are the lines of code that you need to add inside of your polybar config in order to enable trayer. Now you can specify the position of trayer. For example, we have a trayer position to the right. You can set it to the center, to the left, or wherever you want. And for the font, I'm using Firaco nerd font now use nerd fonts if you want icons work together and the reason for that is because default monospace fonts will not work at all if you don't have nerd fonts just go open up your browser go into nerdfonts.com and open up go into fonts download and you can search for different things you know pair up code as you can see this is the Piraco nerd font just hit download and move all of the ttf 
files to slash user slash share slash fonts so do that and you should be able to add icons as expected now i did not talk about the rofi config as you can see rofi can be configured to look like this so this is all pycom in the background so let me open up the rofi configuration now if you ever work with css then this should not be too bad to work with so we have display dran display window dran display format you know all of that and the main part is the icons if you want to add icons to rofi like this then you need to make sure that you have these two lines inside of your configuration otherwise you will not have these icons at all now make sure you also use the node font inside of your rofi configuration otherwise again these icons would not work at all so i will link this description i will link this configuration as well as a video explaining this much better way in the description down below again this config is not mine so i could not really explain all of this but yeah that's all there is as you can see there is nothing too much about my desktop and again uh, the dot files are in the description down below and videos related to different uh, configs are also in the description down below so if you like my video make sure you like it hit the subscribe button and i will see you in the next video everything changes